you mentioned CEOs, directors, and then and then those that are sort of maybe dormant in their life and want to really go at something. But it's a very varied field you get, isn't it? It really is. And, and yeah, it I is, think for yeah. those listening, it's important to, to mention that these events aren't designed for those that have only run 100 miles before, for yeah. example, because the way that you've got to train and the way you've got to actually prepare yourself for these events is difficult because you can't replicate the environments and whilst you might see boxes and sweatsuits and saunas on spin bikes from years gone by with no real scientific logic as to why unless they were making weight which they <laughs> probably so were then yeah. there's not really much you can do in scotland or scunthorpe or barren <laughs> yorkshire to mimic being at altitude or being in the humidity and yeah. that's where the internal resolve that comes from the individual is key but I think the question to ask of yourself is, is what have you got within you? And you'll have seen every sort of person come through your races that's asking that question. Are there any people that stick out? Obviously, you don't need to name names, but are there any people that really stick out to you or really subverted your expectations? Um, I think like we've had either end of the age scale. So we've had young 18 year old. Wow. you know boy or girl come with parent and you just always wonder how that relationship's going to go down you know far, what a cool thing to do like amazing, i always yeah. i always i mean you know my story now i've just shared it when we get a father and son combo i'm a wreck you know like there was a couple recently finishing our rangers race and even now i'm losing my voice i just i just have to walk away because i just think it's a, such a beautiful yeah, thing to incredible. go through that together um you know in our ice race they they unfortunately didn't finish but we had a father and daughter you know she was 18 what were their names i saw george and were... george and maria yeah, yeah so they, the they came, yeah, yeah, yeah. They came yeah. out for a second time and, and maria they're such a cool they're from zimbabwe yeah. where how the hell are you going to replicate that you know and um uh, we just get all these really cool types of people of different age demographics. I always like when you, there was one particular race where we had a billionaire, multi-billionaire hotel owner sat next to a milkman from Wakefield. That's fantastic. You know what I mean? So <laughs> like this, fantastic. Guy, this guy could, this guy's bought the race, not even, he's probably come through his PA and stuff. You would never know he was a billionaire as well. Like but it's a leveler, so, isn't it? It's a yeah, total he's leveler. So humble, he's there at the same time. And the, the, the desert didn't, care It'd kick his ass just as much as the milkman from wakey but the, the milkman had saved for two years to do this race so financially complete end of the scale but then they became like best buds you know and, and one had had a privileged upbringing and the other one had, had, had been and they became best buds because they, they ran together and all these kind of things so um you get these like beautiful moments but i think there's been a couple in particular where you've seen someone Someone normally doesn't crash out like that. Our team, are, because we've been doing it so long, are exceptionally good at spotting people before they crash out, mm. before they blow up, because obviously we want to manage the safety. And there's been a few people where you think that level of pain that they're going through, I can understand to some degree. And for them to continue in that pain cave for that long, you know, there's one particular guy I'm, I, I'm thinking of, Matt, in the jungle back in 2000 and. He, it, I think it was 2019. His feet essentially fell off. His feet were, were. We taped him. We drugged him. We'd done everything we can for him, but his feet were in pieces. And and the long stage in the jungle, the stages get longer as the days go on, or tougher. And the long stage is just a brutal mess of everything that you've just done over like 75k. And it starts at 4:30 in the morning. We sometimes get people come back at 4:30 the following day. You know, like it. It, it is an absolute. And that is that the last day? It's the last day. So oh, everyone is just like, rough. I'm not giving up now. I'm not. And he was in a group of about eight or nine of them that were all doing it together. And they were all there on the final day. And they were all doing it. It's how we became friends with the Rain for Rangers crew. And we set up a race with them in the end. But Matt in particular, I got to the start line around about an hour before, like I normally do. And I called everyone up. It's 3.30 in the morning. It's dark. They're all coming out of the hammocks. It's pissing down in rain. And Matt, is. I could see that he was almost just like, you know, when, you know, when uh, someone's kind of like power sobbing and they're kind of like, yeah. I, I can't show your listeners, but like they're, you, you don't hear them crying, but you just kind of see them shaking. I was like, he's either laughing or he's just like in pieces over there. I don't you know what's going on. You can make an guess on which it yeah. is at this point. <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't even know what's going to go on over there, but let's see anyway. And anyway, whatever happened, I don't know to this day whether he was laughing or crying. I saw him kind of come out of the shadows and he only traveled about 20 meters, but it took him about half an hour. 
his every foot that he was putting down on the floor, he was just in pieces. And anyway, he gets on the start line. He starts that day. And we've got quite tough cutoffs that day. So I just radioed ahead to the team and said, look, I, Matt's not going to make it. Have the vehicle ready at checkpoint one. Lo and behold, four hours later, he gets through. No, no, he's continuing. Car goes to checkpoint two. We can't take the car past checkpoint two. So have a word with him at checkpoint two. Make sure he's definitely okay to go. He's got this. And, and we were working it out to the point where it was like, oh, you know, he's going to, you know, this next thing, he's got to go up a river for 10K, not even in and out of a river, up a river, like on slippery rocks and stuff with his feet like that. And anyway, he made the cutoff with like one minute to spare. And then he had a further 20K to go. And he hobbled his way through and got in at about 3.30 in the morning. Was, was there a cutoff beyond that point or was... No, was, no, no. He could so, he could, he could, could wow. go. So he just had to make it 50K. I bet that's in. when it started to hurt. That's yeah. <laughs> Well, after so after the 50K mark, once he made it, there is a savage climb up and down. And he was doing that in the dark now. So he was out in the jungle, in the dark, savage up, savage down. It's pouring down with rain. It's wet. It's muddy. It's sliding. Where the last time you want your foot to be out of control and every single step you're doing, you're just either on your ass or moving. So... He did that. And anyway, he comes in 3.30 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, whatever it was. They come in as a three. There's three of two of them stayed with him to, to get him across the line. All of them finished. All of them got to the end. But I've never seen a man look so vacuous. You know, he was almost shell-shocked in terms of like what he'd been through to get there. And I just thought, I to this day, I've never met anyone that's kind of that tough. You know what I mean? Like that level of tough that he's been through so plenty of them plenty come close but he stands out to me as the guy that kind of did it and then off he disappears into regular life back to his day job on the following monday god knows how he processed all that uh yeah he some some guy he was to to get there and um medal well earned i suppose Matt, you're an animal if you if you ever decide to listen to this good grief that was riveting i uh i can only imagine i'm actually very fortunate that my feet I've always been very, very manageable. I've never really had blisters with any ultra stuff, which I know is the biggest bugbear for most people. So I'm very fortunate there. But when I have had issues with my feet, it does get bad oh, it, fast. He, he wasn't just were, blisters. His his was, he was just tendons. Beyond belief. Yeah, his was tendons. Everything was gone. Like his feet were just like trotters by the end of it. It was gross. So, um, but now, like to be in that amount of pain for that amount of time and, and to, to have see it that, much, that much resolve and get the result, like a minute, in that in a 50k of that kind of duration in that terrain is is like finishing you know uh, a second before the world record uh you know with with no right to do so so uh, yeah he he was he was cool and and uh, that was the moment for me where i thought this event is exactly where it needs to be because you've got people that shouldn't finish finish if they mentally if they want to get through it 